the classroom is no longer a one-size-fits-all. I saw a result that was issued to a special child from the school that he attends. In the result, the boy was issued an F for all the 10 subjects he offered. And the teacher commented that the child needed to work harder. I asked myself, how else is this child to work harder? By the way, there are no dull learners only dull teachers. If you have taught a child and he scores F all round, this is a sign that you, the teacher, have failed in your responsibility and nothing, absolutely nothing, has been taught. This is 2021 and teachers need to upskill their teaching methods and techniques. If the kids do not learn the way you teach, it is your responsibility to figure out how to teach the child. Also, understand and educate yourself on teaching special needs children. I realized that the teacher and the school are oblivious of special needs and the best way to teach them. It is also emotionally draining and discouraging to send such a callous result to the parents. We need teachers to be trained on special needs education and how to navigate teaching children with special needs. We also need to be empathic as individuals. If the teacher was empathic, he or she would have known that such a result should never be sent to anybody chocolates of a parent. We have even seen now more than ever that academic success does not equal life success. So we must ensure that we do not write off learners in the classroom. The classroom should no longer be a one size fits all. You know, um, <laughs> when I, when I, <laughs> When I, when I listened to your advocacy, I was, I was blown away because I think this is a topic that we've ignored a lot. It's only in Nigeria where special needs kids are not good in arithmetic. A across the world, they top the charts, NASA. Mm -hmm. They are super smart. Yes, but they can't be taught the way we teach um, other kids. So it begs the question. If they are so super smart, because they are usually geniuses across, as seen, with, they are very good with math, some are very good with pictorial representation, they are massively intelligent. So it just means that our educational system cannot handle geniuses. That's all. That's what I translated from that. But, but to also be very honest, mm -hmm. you, you find that a lot of the no need students uh, go to school here in Nigeria and they do badly or they just manage. Maybe even come with a third class and then they go and do a master's abroad and they are the by far class. the best. True. Okay. So it, it um, I, I, I think that the way we'll teach or we expect people to learn might not really be the best for critical thinking. So you, you are thought to take it as is given. Okay, so let me tell you one, one of the things that I experienced in, in the university. If your lecturer teaches you something in a certain way, and then you find another way of explaining it, mm. you might be penalized for not even putting it down word for word. So that also shows that generally we might have an a problem with how we expect people to learn in Nigeria. What I think what it shows clearly is that um, Nigeria spends less than 10% of its budget on education. That's well, what I heard it shows. that um, Bori is going to move it to 50% in the coming years. 50? Yes, I heard. 15, I wrong. not 50. Oh, one five. Oh, how can it be 50 now? <laughs> yeah. I what thought it was going to be a new Nigeria. No, no, no. no I, I, I think that sadly um, this issue, this <laughs> issue that has been raised here is something that is deep, is painful. And it now also for me says that as people, especially in the education space, 
there's that drive, that need for education to become different. The skills of the future are so different from what Nigeria is even understanding or identifying. And obviously, we're still using outdated teaching methods to be able to teach children in this in this time and age. 2021. And, of, and then, of course, now with all the myriad of issues raised here, is it any wonder that people are trying to jump out of Nigeria? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was very relevant but then really it's sad it's unfortunate and for special needs children i've always had a heart for it and i've been like okay but i think because i've been involved in a lot of things around education and development i believe that there is a gradual mm. but slow change occurring in the education sector yes maybe from the private system private school system but somewhat somehow special needs children are becoming relevant i know quite a number a few right now that Parents are identifying, and they don't also forget that the issue of stigmatization from society and also an inadequacy in terms of teaching teachers themselves. But teachers, this is let's give them some credit. I believe I, it's a painful experience. It was experience. instead I give the it, child it, it's a painful experience and sent it to the parents. Yes, in it, the house. a painful experience, but I know because I have been in that space and I do have people in that space that a lot of teachers nowadays are personally upscaling. Now, can personally. it be done better? Can the school system, can we as society begin to hold the education system through every form we know, accountable, say, you know what, we want a difference. Can we begin to put push ourselves together and say, let's change the I, okay. I want to take off from where you, mm. you, you um, started. Um, so what I got from the advocacy is that it's two-pronged. There's the issue of special needs, and then there's the issue of even just the general education itself. Mm -hmm. When Kaduna State Governor decided to be brave and take a step in that direction and say, okay, let me even in find out the people who in are inside, um, yes, inside this place that is teaching the next generation. Mm -hmm. And all people were interested in is how to collect their money. It wasn't an issue of, it's even true. Let's go through the system. Let's go through the exam. Let's go through the fire and see who will come out, uh, come out of it. So your education system already is in a huge, it's, it's a, there's a huge problem there. There isn't enough money to even, um, what do you call it, to, to standardize it. Mm. Then you've left the, the space to entrepreneurial people, That's not it. educationists. Mm. When I was growing up, I, I was taught by teachers, people who loved, who had the passion, who understood, and that's what is also missing. And so, when you now spoke about um, not sending F9 to the, um, to the parents, that it is not fair. If the child has made F9, it's F9. You, you, you let the parent know. I am not one of those people that thinks that there, there's a standard. There are, there's a minimum standard that a child needs to, needs to be educated on because he or she is going to go out into the world. If you don't know how to add, if you don't understand how to speak basic, you put your tenses properly and all, that needs to be done. But as she said also, the issue of feeling sorry for the teachers, our teachers here are honestly battered. They're like, the, like they're, they are honestly battered. They are not, um, they are, what do you call it, motivated enough. They are not being carried along. Um, and the parents, again, everything is the teacher. If, yes. the, if the child is not behaving properly, it's the teacher. If the child is not, it's the teacher. Where, where, where is the role of the parent in ensuring that, you know, we're not at home to even help them with mm -hmm. their homework. We're not at home to even understand, okay, what did you do in school? Where mm -hmm. can I help? Can I go and meet your teacher? We've left everything. We've, we've mm -hmm. outsourced it to a system that is already in problem. Yeah, and sure, if you have mm. special needs children, should you as a parent actually put your special needs child in, in a mainstream school. school without actually putting, making sure yeah. that that mainstream school has the capacity, capacity to take in special needs children? Exactly. And if they don't, what can I as that kind of parent actually do Thank to that you. system? So, you know, it's, it's a myriad of issues. Or should we actually even scrap formal education you know, and I, really look at I, it and say, is this system working for us? You know, but I, I, we've, I've seen some developments in the sector. I have a friend in Abuja who has a special needs child. Um, she's about 13 now. Mm -hmm. But um, I, their system, what they did was, he and his wife started a school. His wife went and started reading online about special needs education. And they started a school. And right now, they're the foremost in special needs education. In you see, that's it. I know people who've done that. And so, but so that is one person. But with the kind of, it, it's like sometimes these issues raise opportunities, doors mm. that we're not looking at. Mm. They begin to, and what I believe strongly in the last one year, people in the education space, outside of government, you know, government and people should understand that technology and the change in dynamics 
have created avenues to change things. So if we actually have the opportunity to, in that space, as this advocacy is going on and as educationists are listening or watching, there's a lot of change that can be created because half of the children today are homeschooling anyway. Yeah. So can we actually take advantage of what we're having on ground and change the narrative? But then again, if a school, that particular school, that parent is not enough to just be angry, there should be issues taken up with that school. Now, why do we have a regular teacher taking this ch child mm -hmm. and giving no regular... You can't grade the child on what the child doesn't know. So definitely, we've all agreed that the parent the teacher, the society, the government and private institution, all of us have to come together to make education for special needs better in Nigeria. We bring these issues to your plate because we all want a better society and a better Nigeria. So, we will always want to see some of your opinions on issues we discuss here. Emu Owobete says APC and PDP members are already wired a certain way. The honest youths have to infiltrate both parties and diplomatically alter their mindsets. Unfortunately, is it through these parties that we should stand a chance to improve, that we stand a chance of improving the system because they own everything? Dotsu Ajamuna says, mm -hmm. I would like how, I like how we talk about things that should be done as if we don't know how the contra <laughs> contraption works. You expect the National Assembly to bite the hand that feeds them. Who honestly believes that a bunch of people unqualified to be representatives to begin with to embark on a process that will not favor them? Man, I laugh, but hope springs internal, I suppose. We have now come to the end of this week's episode of The Advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, Hashtag the advocate ng or on Instagram at plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts. Go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. <laughs> <laughs>